they've got some tough opponents coming up, but today a team in Iowa they're familiar with with last night's performance should be a chance for Sioux Falls to capitalize and get another win in front of their home crowd. The Iowa Wolves winning the tip with Wendell Moore Jr. able to jump in and steal the tap that was first touched by Orlando Robinson on assignment from the Miami Heat. DJ Carton, who had a successful night last night, buries his first. Right now you're seeing really the strength for both teams out there on the floor, but these bench guys are going to have to be ready today. As we mentioned, legs are going to be a little shaky, although right now the Wolves, the way they're coming out shooting, they mean business here today after losing last night's contest. Trevor Keels with the three from the outside. Gives the Iowa Wolves a 5-0 lead. Iowa Wolves not very prolific in three-point shooting. Drew Peterson will answer for the Sky Force. Robinson's inside game is going to be so important. His miss turned into a transition bucket there when he's playing well in the interior. Pat O'Connell's second consecutive game is crew chief. And the Wolves able to pick it clean. And it's aggressive to the 10 for Philip Wheeler. Iowa Wolves, Philip Wheeler. He's a coming. Taking it all the way. Helping the Iowa Wolves playing on their heels just a little bit. The Wolves who are just one in six on the season, needing that type of effort consistently all game long. Orlando Robinson to the hole. Nine rebounds in that contest. Last night, 21 points, 17 rebounds. Yeah, he's got the offensive skills to continuously play up there as a necessity getting into that starting lineup. It's for the shooters outside for Sioux Falls. A clean possession there to get them back to a two possession game. Wheeler on the drive, it is sent away by Robinson. Gets it back and it's blocked again. And sweeped up by Williams. Those warnings are just there to kind of remind everybody to keep the pace up. Yes, they kick to the corner, Cook is allowed to shoot and he bangs it home. He said, he, he said man, those guys come after that camera. Champagne for three. He said, the camera don't give. I'll give a little, but the camera don't. If he's out on the perimeter, they're gonna close out. Caleb Daniels go opting for the drive and earning the two for one. Well, and with how physical this Sky Force team plays, they need to be good at the free throw line. They're one of three today. They were just nine of 18 last night. That's going to play a major role in this game and probably was part of the reason why the game ended up being closer than it should have been at the end of the night. Isaiah Moore, they converge. He does get it away. Cook Yacht from the corner. And Cook Yacht is able to Put one down for the Wolves. They're back up by four. Well, looking at Yacht, he played just four minutes last night, so he was in limited use. That's a guy you might see more of here this afternoon. Champagny's three is off the mark. One and done for the Sky Force in this possession. No gel Eastern. Well, I'll send it out to Carton. Carton will drive. Carton will finish. Down to the 345 mark. Bouye's gonna drive, he'll kick it out. Daniels, three, not quite. Rebound comes way out, Carton gives it off. Devontae Cook. Then they get their opportunities to go up to the big show. You lose that scoring down here a little. Brandon McCoy able to get it out of trouble. McCoy, a good option coming off the bench with his size, his ability down low. Wendell Moore Jr. Drives it in and scores. Leading players five for either team. Ooh, the three from downtown get the two for one opportunity. Yeah, it's been impressive to say the least what the Sky Force have been able to do to feed teams up to the NBA, to the Miami Heat, and what those players have done with their careers, turning it in to nothing but playoff success, championship success, and I think the relationship between Sioux Falls and the Miami Heat continues to grow and continues to be successful because you've seen uh, great stories like those individuals. And getting guys to continuously come here and say good things about the way things are ran here goes a long ways towards, uh, I think, building that confidence with the, the big wigs upstairs. The fadeaway for Drew Peterson. And again, he's such a fun player to watch. He's played nine minutes so far today. Limited opportunities with the shot, but now seven points. He's taken over as the game's leader. On the other end, Bowen with the three. And again, we mentioned that he had been dry from the outside and now hits his first three-pointer in this eighth game with the season. On the other end, Caleb Daniels. 
I think both teams run the floor better now. They're starting to see the floor better. And you're getting more shots up in short periods of time. Catch and shoot, Manny Camper. Runs in this level of basketball, the NBA G League, you're going to see a game of runs where one team will score 12 straight, the other will drop 12. It's going to be back and forth like that most of the night. And now half the shot clock is gone. Two-man game. McCoy gets it. And he'll score and he'll get one more. McCoy's game down low. He's such a presence inside. He's so big. It's tough to match up against some really good Division II basketball players. Sometimes kind of a forgotten entity of the NCAA just because you get so many high-quality products coming from D1 products. Schools, big-name schools like Duke. But uh, there are... So select few from the, the NAIA ranks, Division II ranks, who can come up and compete. Bowen buries one from the outside. Well, the Sky Force had cut it to two, 35-33. But it's the Iowa Wolves on the run. Drew Peterson will draw up a three-pointer from the left wing. Cook. And the pass is picked off by Justin Champagny. He'll get it back and he'll put it in. When he moves in transition, sometimes even with the basketball out of his hands, it's when Champagny really starts to shine. That time ran the floor well, got the ball in open space, and you can see how he can fly when he's got those lanes towards the hoop. Wendell Moore, Jr., a little long. And the Sky Force trail by five. Daniels, the ball fake. Again, they have to respect the three-point shot. They'll work Champagny in the post. He'll get it and get one more. Champagny's got two, three inches on the defender there. Just backed him up, smart vet. Now will miss the free throw. He's got nine points, along with three rebounds, plus a steal and a blocked shot in this contest. Let's see how Carton responds. He and Moore have done so good at the top of the key, and that's such a smooth first step there. Last night was a 102-97 Sioux Falls win. Bouye with the steal. There's time. Champagny's going to take it. He'll finger roll. They will review it, but they will count the basket, and we'll take a look at it as well. Just so smooth, so quick in transition, and there's where the veteran play of Champagny comes in. He knew exactly. But uh, again, I think his presence, what he brings offensively is great. What he can mean to this team, though, de defensively could really be the big difference maker. Well, a looseness down low, and the Iowa Wolves able to take advantage. Well, and one thing to, to keep in mind about Orlando Robinson, J.J., is that maybe with the second night of a back-to-back, -back, you get a little bit of a breather in that first half and then really put things together in that second half. Well, that's just it. How you make your adjustments coming out of the locker room at halftime will tell you a lot about where your team's at mentally in the game. Couple of buckets. Working to single digits on the shot clock off the pick and roll. It's Robinson on the switch with Wendell Moore. Keels is stuck in the corner. And he's able to get all the way to the cup. Trevor Keels, clutch. He only played 10 minutes in the first half, but he is the team leader for Iowa today in points with nine. He's been efficient, four or five scoring. A nice quick bucket there for Williams inside. He continues to attack the perimeter, looking at those five-foot jumpers, not trying to do anything too difficult outside. Alondis Williams with 15 to lead Sioux Falls. Still no player for Iowa in double figures yet. could see him running down the floor, talking to himself afterwards, kind of saying, all right, I'm done with that. Went in hard to the rim there and got himself a bucket. Orlando Robinson sent away that opportunity. And Carton going to the floor to save it. Wendell Moore Jr. on the second opportunity. Well, and Carton came up limping there a little bit, grabbing his, I don't know if it's the hamstring or right hip area, but he's trying to walk off something right now. Might just be a Charlie horse, but either way, yeah, he's out there feeling it. Orlando Robinson with a dive to the bucket. Unable to finish. Four on four, and it's a three from the corner. Start to wear out some of these Iowa defenders. Again, it was a quick turnaround after last night. Back end of a doubleheader, essentially. There's a baseline run for D.J. Carton. 
well, if you look at the trends in this game, JJ, you haven't seen a Sky Force run of any significance. You'll see a couple of buckets here, a couple there. I think some of the effects for these two teams, maybe some shaky legs at times, some inconsistent play just because of the fact that you're playing twice in 24 hours. The three, Sky Force three of nine from the free throw line after that miss by Alondis Williams. Carton with the glide and the floater. His left hand is his dominant hand. And puts the Iowa Wolves in hand of a 21-point lead. Alondis Williams in what? There's passing lanes here. That was a great job to take away anything easy for this Sioux Falls offense. The Iowa Wolves will come away with the ball. Wendell Moore Jr. will advance, and it comes loose. Bryson Warren will lead it forward for Brandon McCoy, who will deposit plus one. Some life into this offense for Sioux Falls through his defensive play. That time got the steal, found his big man down low, and McCoy has a chance. Still very much anybody's game if Sioux Falls can get rolling offensively, but it's going to have to start with quick possessions and execution down low just like that. We'll run the weave. Wendell Moore will opt for the stop and pop. Minute 10, or rather two minutes and 10 seconds of this fourth quarter. Ooh, that's not quite what they wanted there. It seemed like Peterson just a little late coming back in, but quick turnover. And it turns into a three. Boy, yeah, there are a heavy dosage of uh, road games due up here for both teams that could be challenging in the month of December. Londis Williams continues his scoring progression. He's up to 18 to lead Sioux Falls. Well, and the Winter Showcase will wrap up in the middle of December, too, so that's going to kind of be everybody's focus here for the next few weeks, but as soon as you get into the new year, it kind of goes into that full, heavy-duty, regular season schedule, and then you start thinking playoffs before you know it. Carton with the jumper, Skyforce with some ball pressure. Offensive rebound comes to Cook, who puts it in. 24 minutes for Cook tonight. He's got 17 points. Tied for the team lead in scoring. Drew Peterson goes on the reverse. Peterson with 12. And Iowa relaxed just a little bit on that possession. Sky Force took advantage. Eastern bowls his way to the hole. That one just spins off. Caleb Daniels, the Euro. That one tipped out. No one was on the wing except for Trevor Keels. Here comes DJ Carton. Oh, wipe that one away. There as far as his minutes played, but they could have used a little bit more of him there in that third quarter, but the fouls dictated uh, where he was going to be out there, and that was on the bench. That one short, but pops in. Didn't work out there, but what Williams is doing on both ends of the floor right now for Sioux Falls is impressive. He's out there. He's playing hard. You see there getting that rebound. He's had chances to get assists each of the last two possessions. He'll you know, pick up one there. Yeah, he's moving the ball around the floor really well right now, and he's running hard. And he says it was a surreal scene, but, you know, the playoffs, it's all it's cracked up to be, oh. the intensity. And, and that's what you hope for, right? That's why you play down here at this level at the G League. You hope you get that chance to get called up. Wendell Moore is going to drive in. He'll get some contact, and he'll put two more on the board for Wendell Moore Jr. 15 points, 13 rebounds. That one comes in. Well, as you start evaluating, because that's what this G League's kind of about, right? Looking at players, evaluating their talent level, finding ways to move them up. Iowa Wolves with 36 to 21 advantage. And then on the fast break, outscoring Sioux Falls by seven. Points in the paint, Sioux Falls with a six-point advantage. But the Sky Force have committed 22 turnovers. And Caleb Daniels able to hit one to make it 98-85. And, and he, you get to this point of the ball game, this is a six-point run. This is the largest run, actually, they've had in the game. They've had a couple of five-point runs, but that's just not enough. Keels from the outside. Well, I've been really impressed with his play today. Again, a very quiet afternoon with 24 uh, minutes played, but 14 points. Here comes Javante Cook. 
once the final buzzer sounds will be 103-86. And that will signify the end of the ball game. The game is over after the third note on the scale.